Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go into some deeper lore revolving around Nurgle. You see, when I've spoken about Nurgle in the past in many videos, every now and then I'm told that Nurgle is kind of generic, it's kind of boring, it's just the typical spread plague and that's it. But in reality there's actually a lot of unique stuff when it comes to the Lord of Decay. At a first glance it's all as expected. We've got the Demons of Nurgle, extensions of the Plague Father himself, warriors of Nurgle, these are most commonly Northmen who have fallen under the sway of the Plague Father, and naturally also beastmen in the form of Pestigors and other tainted goats. Now these three baseline factions are stuff that we've seen throughout the majority of the Warhammer settings, not just in Warhammer Fantasy, but also with Chaos Space Marines in 40k, and pretty much all the factions being translated outright in Age of Sigmar. And if you look deeper into the lore of of these factions you could find even more distinctions. For example in Warhammer Fantasy, forces dedicated to Nurgle having some of the most powerful navies around. Now all of those distinctions act in a very typical way for Chaos. What if there was another way that Nurgle could spread his corruption in possibly the most unique manner in all of Warhammer lore. Some of you might remember the game Mordheim, it's the gem of Warhammer fantasy if anything else. It is a game focused more on character based combat where you'd be building up a warband and trying to get some weird stone, also known as warp stone. There was a whole setting around it, it had a few expansions, and thankfully, thanks to some very devoted fans, it still lives on. Even some former devs actively take part in writing up new scenarios, for example. Now, as this was set in the Warhammer Fantasy setting, you could imagine that there'd be loads of factions. You could play as the Skaven, for example, you could play as Witch Hunters, the Sisters of Sigmar, or you could play as the Carnival of Chaos, a faction of Nurgle demons, which are perhaps the most active faction within the whole Nurgle roster, as they were constantly moving across the Empire and perhaps other human nations in the Warhammer Fantasy world. With a decent amount of unique miniatures, keep in mind that the warbands themselves were not too large, but it was actually so popular that a few people have continued the Carnival of Chaos scheme when it comes to even 40k and Age of Sigmar, not through official lore purposes but rather keeping the theme alive, which I think is quite important. The faction itself didn't really have a lot of art, but in recent years we've seen the revival or at least mentions of the faction throughout Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, which means that they still remain in canon and it's very possible we could see their reemergence and say Warhammer the Old World, which would be great. Now the faction itself does not have a lot of lore, but what we're going to do is read over it as, yeah, you guys will probably want to know about the Carnival of Chaos. Another roar of laughter came from the crowd, like muted thunder as the mock knight panther, bedecked in armour of tin and wielding a wooden sword, slipped upon some entrails. It was a battlefield scene, pig's blood, uncoiled rope, and animal intestine were strewn about the stage as mock carnage. A horse, a horse, the emperor is a horse, the knight wailed, as his mind succumbed to chaos. The travelling players had arrived in the village without word or prior arrangement replete with ramshackle cart that doubled as a dressing room and makeshift theatre. A host of colourful characters loped and cavorted alongside with mesmerising wit and charm, announcing to all and sundry they would be performing a rendition of the play The Emperor's True Face. Crowds had gathered quickly, initially children, and then women, and finally the men, and soon the entire village was under the player's spell. Dimitri was one of the last to join the eager and enthralled throng, skeptical at first, but in moments he too was utterly engrossed. The play reached the northern waste scene, a rotted wooden placard carried across the stage, describing as much by a robed demon with a seemingly permanent grin. Dimitri marvelled as other demonic characters, whose costumes were uncannily realistic, danced and skipped amongst the appreciative crowd. Chicken feathers thrown by the demons drifted down like snow. A wonderful macabre jester performed acrobatics, tapping the village's children's foreheads who sat transfixed in the front row as he sprang past with his tickle stick. A foul and repungent odour filled Dimitri's nostrils as an uncomfortable burning sensation grew upon his chest, but he couldn't take his eyes off the play, utterly lost in the unfolding drama. 
His wife and child, sitting at the front of the stage, were a distant memory. Now only he and the bizarrely macabre players existed. The night panther slipped again and Dimitri laughed out loud. A plague demon bore down upon the play's unlikely hero, and the enraptured farmer marveled at its realism. Eyes widening, Dimitri stared with incredulity as the plague creature swelled, stomach bloating as it filled with a stagnant air. A shape with what looked like arms and legs poured within, stretching the flesh thin like clinging mucus. Something was wrong. The plague creature's mouth distended to agonizing proportions, but Dimitri couldn't look away. It belched forth a tiny demon creature that sat wallowing amidst a foul miasma of vomit and pooling slime from the creature's stomach. The charade was revealed for what it was, a conjuration of chaos. Slime trails left by the actors spat and bubbled. Human eyeballs, heads, real corpses, diseased and rotting were strewn about the stage. These things wore no masks, but were demons themselves. A weight like a heavy millstone fell about his neck and shoulders as Dimitri made to rise. He turned, panic welling in his heart. The ruinous powers were roaming free and unchecked in the Empire. He looked to his brothers for aid, trying to raise the alarm, but they were all dead, horribly swollen with some unseen pestilence, pustules and boils on their flesh, spilling over with all the fervor of a grotesque epidemic. Horrified, Dimitri looked down at the burning at his chest. He ripped away his shirt in pain and saw an icon resting there, inscribed with a sigil of Sigmar. Abruptly, a foul, filth-encrusted dagger came into view, lifting the amulet from Dimitri's chest and leaving behind a red wheel. Is this an icon of Sigmar I see before me? A voice reminiscent of bubbling flesh asked. It was the head player. His moon-shaped face was covered in warts and boils, and he was dressed in thick, gaudy robes. Dimitri was terrified. What have you done? He stammered, recoiling. The head player moved forward a step, keeping pace as Dimitri lurched back. Foul worshippers of chaos, he cried defiantly, suddenly aware that he was surrounded. Yes, alas, that is true, my noble lord, a voice from Dimitri's left confirmed. A thin and short character, hunched over, face like some grin theatrical mask, split down the forehead. An infestation of flies buzzed around him as he fanned a set of tarot cards. But your words wound me, sir, he continued with mock offense, slicing open a cut in his wrist with one of the tarot cards. We are but flesh, like you, he said, drawing closer. If you prick us, do we not bleed? With sniggering contempt, the tarot card demon squeezed the blood from his wound, which dripped down upon the Sigmarite talisman, dissolving it like acid. Instantly, Dimitri could feel the effects of whatever malady had overtaken his kinsmen. He was defenseless, Head swimming, he walled around drunkenly a myriad of grinning faces surrounding him. A brutish-looking clown with daubed-on face paint hideously joined with physical mutation. A dark, grinning jester with a demonic hand puppet that chattered in sync with its bearer. A host of grinning, sneering faces awash with color that was bright and dirty at the same time. Dimitri felt the sickness overtake him and sank to his knees in the dirt. The Dark Jester lifted his chin up to face him as the hand puppet spoke for him. Why then, it said, the talisman's resistance ebbing. Your stomach is mine, oyster, he continued as a sudden silver flash from a dagger caught Dimitri's eye. Which I, with sword, shall open, the jester himself concluded darkly. As the blade slipped in and the carnival players began their grisly work, one last thought occurred to Dimitri. Helena, he cried, with the last of his dying breath, my wife. The head player loomed into view, his moon-like visage blotting out Dimitri's son for the last time. She's my wife now, Dimitri. No one knows from whence it came, the dreaded carnival of chaos. Some have rumored that it was once a gypsy caravan from the east of the empire, wandering folk that brought their colorful fare from village to village, entertaining the poor rural folk of the empire with their lavish shows and stage plays. If this past is the truth, then what it has become in the present is far more sinister and deadly. Still, it wanders the rural backwaters of the Empire. In a colourful cavalcade of wagons, its folk dressed in 
the colorful finery of traveling players, bringing sonnet and song to excitable villagers and peasants. Upon reaching a new settlement, these outlandish showmen erect their stage and entertain the poor rural folk with songs and plays of the dark days of the empire. Tales such as the Emperor's True Face, Ophio and Postulate, Papa Neugol's festering children, and a midsummer nightmare, wow the enruptured throng. Strongmen perform feats of incredible prowess to the adoration of the crowd, whilst players in garish, grinning mass juggle balls, knives, and flaming brands. As the crowd's numbers increase, a fool in bright jester's garb, with an inflated pig's bladder on a stick, leaps from one enthralled watcher to the next, joking and crackling poking and prodding. It's only when the show reaches its blasphemous climax, as the sun begins to set, that the truth of the Carnival of Chaos is revealed in all its putrid, festering glory. For these are no mere wandering thespians and entertainers. When the players perform their final act, known as the Dance of Death, the enchantments covering their true visages slowly slip away, revealing them to their blissfully ignorant audience, for they are cavorting cyclopean demons with rotting flesh hanging from yellow bones. What were originally considered intricately decorated masks and cleverly applied makeup is soon revealed as the player's true, horribly mutated faces, covered in postules and pox-ridden lesions, as the villagers' expressions turn from those of elation to abject terror at the sight of these horrific visions, the slaughter begins. By now, most of the folk who made up the cheering audience would have already succumbed to the virulent diseases spread by these malevolent players. The insidious carnival master, accompanied by his crackling fool, rounds up those unfortunate women and children that remain remain alive, taking a finger from each of his new brides, exclaiming, you're my wife now. These survivors are then led away to an unknown fate, and the village is left deserted, its inhabitants and livestock killed by innumerable diseases and plagues. The Carnival of Chaos is the sick joke of the Great Lord of Decay, the Chaos God known as Nurgle. Thrice cursed, Nurgle is also known as the unspeakable Master of Plague and Pestilence, and the players in the Carnival are his corrupt followers and worshippers. They are those who have sold their souls for a twisted form of immortality, through embracing death and destruction and decay, learning to love Nurgle's many varied gifts. It is not known how many Carnivals of Chaos there are, or if the handful of reports from the lips of petrified witnesses all refer to the same warband. The leader of the Carnival of Chaos is known as the Carnival Master, and is reputed to be a sorcerer of great power, wielding the unclean magic of his lord to cause suffering and death through disease and decay. Through dark ritual and sacrifice, the Carnival Master summons forth the cackling, decaying demons of his patron god to take part in the Twisted Masquerade. His mortal followers carefully nurture their newly acquired diseases, blessings of their gregarious deity and vie for power and advancement under his watchful gaze. The most blessed of these twisted, insane creatures are those known as the Tainted Ones. These are often the right-hand men of the Carnival Master, and their bodies are racked with a multitude of foul diseases and mutation. The Carnival of Chaos is justly hunted by the many bands of zealous witch hunters that traverse the lands but always seem to be just one step ahead of the Sigmarites, and continues to follow its merry path, bringing the blessings of Nurgle to all. So what makes this faction fairly unique is that while most Chaos factions would be hidden away with cults until the time was right, or you would see large armies attacking nations, you know, sacking settlements, burning it to the ground and so on, the Carnival of Chaos is always in plain sight. They actively go to locations. They are trying to be a bit secretive, obviously they look like humans due to some spells and so on, but they are not trying to hide who they are. If anything, they're spreading their influence and moving from town to town. It's one of the most active factions who are constantly doing something against, say, for example, the Empire. Cults will always work constantly, but under secrecy. So they will have to stop every now and then to not draw attention. The warbands will have to stop to replenish their numbers every now and then. Whereas the cult can just keep moving and moving, so long as the carnival master still is able to summon in more demons.
We know that the carnival still remains in lore, which is absolutely fantastic, and also had a nod in Age of Sigmar. There's a character known as Sloppity Bilepiper, which pretty much fits the description of something that we already discussed in the lore. And something like this is just so cool because chaos is very one-sided in a sense in terms of how they progress. A lot of the stuff is just repeated and rehashed over and over throughout the many years of Warhammer through all the settings. So seeing a faction literally in plain sight doing their thing, it's kind of cool. And it's little things like this which make chaos so interesting in Warhammer. It's something which, well, Mordheim was just incredible as it stood anyway, because it was just a really fun game. Games Workshop have tried to replicate that uh, funness with, say, Necromunda and Warcry and so on. Necromunda has done quite well. Uh, many of us are just waiting for the return of Mordheim, hoping that Old World brings that back. But it's certainly something fairly unique. Now, I know a lot of you guys watching this video would be saying, what about Total War Warhammer? Could we see a Carnival of Chaos faction brought in? And in truth, eh, it could be possible. It would be nice to see a Nurgle Horde style faction, which might not deal with a lot of combat against Order factions, rather spreading influence, spreading plagues, which could then benefit the other Nurgle factions in the game. Um, maybe you'd be stuck with only one army. It'd be something which would have to be fairly unique, that's for sure. I wouldn't want to see the Carnival of Chaos being introduced as a basically just Kugaf playstyle, that would be incredibly boring. But I guess time will have to tell for that, we don't know if we're gonna get much Nurgle content after Thrones of Decay, which I'm assuming is Tamacon. But what do you guys think about the Carnival of Chaos? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. I want to talk about them today because I was reading over some uh, Mordheim stuff as I'm trying to get a little event going on locally and I just want to play Mordheim again, which is always fun. So yeah, <laughs> it just felt like a perfect time to do a video. And with all that said, have a great day guys and we'll see you all again very, very soon.